All right, step number 14 and 15, we're going to combine together. They're really kind of the same step. Um, go ahead and grab your front assembly here and take your front diff assembly. And it's, you can see there's kind of a, a notch here that's going to slide right on top from the diff. It's going to set right into place there pretty straightforward. Directions are showing us to put the dog bones in, but quite honestly, they're just going to fall back out. So, we're not going to do that. So, let's flip this, go ahead and hold these pieces together and flip the whole unit over. And grab your metal piece, which is the AX31237. And we had to do what we call bag hopping. And that is, is that we are only on metals bag B, and it has not yet said to open C, but this unit is in bag C. So go ahead and hop to bag C and pull this unit out, and place it right in there. It's pretty real obvious which way it goes and in what direction, and we're going to screw it together. Do note that the shorter screw in the directions goes in the front. You're going to need to hold all of this together and get it lined up and grab a screwdriver and all that other fun stuff. So let's see what we can do here gracefully. Which might not be that easy. Easy being the grace, graceful part. There we go, got that one started. All these screws are long. Do I have the right bit? No, nope, too big. That's the smallest bit I have for my electric. Some of these screws get long and you can wear out your wrist pretty quick. Okay, let's put this one in until it touches. That doesn't secure the diff yet, so don't let go of that. And we'll get one of the next ones started here. Let's hold this diff together so at least we can not drop it in a million pieces. It's <sighs> a lot of screwing to do. Okay, somewhat graceful now. Just uh, You're going to feel all the parts pulling together just till it touches and a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, rest of the four screws or the three more screws in off camera. Alright, now that all the screws are in, this is what it should look like. And just like anything, whenever we put pieces together, we always want to start double checking to make sure that nothing is binding up. I'm temporarily just going to slide the the dog bones into the drive cups and spin it and make sure that everything is still nice and loose. No binding. There we go. There's a little bit of resistance on the on the drive shaft but not much. Um, and it's the same resistance and pressure as I go around. There's no dragging or binding going on. So that is step number 15. This is what it should look like at this point. Next is step number 16. Um, pretty straightforward and easy. Uh, the first part is to build the turnbuckles. And to do that we're going to get two units that look exactly the same, um, very much just like this. And we will show you now how to build them. Um, go ahead and get your turnbuckles out. Um, they are the larger in diameter set. There's two of them, two sets that are both the same length, but we want the five millimeter diameter, not the three millimeter diameter. From there, you're going to get four units of the AX31032-3s. 
Um, they're on two, two of them each on two separate trees. So there's two identical trees in. So you'll only find two of them on each tree and they are the larger set that is listed on each tree. We're going to take the AX31024s, we need four of those for this exercise, and they are the little swivels. Um, you may want to just keep this handy because we use a lot of them during the build coming up here. You need to seat those down inside the hole on the turnbuckle ends here. To do that, I lay it down inside the turnbuckle and turn it over and put it on my desk or my workbench and then press on it. These are a little tough to get in, but they do go in. They snap in. Um, when they're in, you want to make sure that they rotate freely. From there, you're going to want to thread the ends onto your turnbuckles. You're going to have to hold this with a pair of pliers and possibly this one with a pair of pliers to get them on. Um, remember that the threads are opposite on each side. Okay, so go ahead and get that threaded on. When you're done, you're going to want to lay it down onto the life-size image here and make sure that they are exactly 45 millimeters from inside edge to inside edge. And you want them to be both exactly the same. So go ahead and get that done and as soon as that's finished we'll get started on mounting them with the rest of step number 16. Alright, for the rest of step number 16 we're going to go ahead and install the turnbuckles here. If you look on the turnbuckles, you're going to see that there is a line on the turnbuckle. On one end of the, of the hex portion here, there is a line. Choose a direction, but you're going to want to both put both of them on with the lines going in the same direction, whichever direction you choose. You don't want both lines on the outside or both lines on the inside. You want them both pointing to one direction or the other, which is your choice. As we're looking at the directions here, we are going to put one end of the turnbuckle. There's four holes here, four different mounting positions. And according to the directions here, it looks like we are going to go to the outer upper hole. Okay, the outer upper hole. So, we will go ahead and take one of our 15 millimeter screws and insert it through one of the ends. Again, watch your lines here so that you get them all in the right direction. And then we're also going to take a washer, which is a metal washer contained in with the little bag with the spring. We're actually going to put that on first onto the screw and put that in. What that does is if that ball pops out, it's going to retain it so the whole arm does not fall off. And we're going to mount this to the upper outer hole from the back. Am I right on that? Yes, from the back. Just looking at the, the picture in the directions. So the upper outer hole from the back. We'll go ahead and screw that in. And again, just till the screw touches. If you uh, over tighten it, you're going to flatten out that little swivel and it's not going to swivel anymore. Okay, you want to make sure that it's all nice and free. And now for the mounting holes on the wheel side here, the pictures are showing us that we are going to the outer or to the inner hole. So we're going to mount these to this hole here, which is the inner hole. So we'll slide the unit in. There's no washer needed on this one. front has a pass through here for the screw. 
So before we do that, we are going to insert the dog bone into the drive cup and make sure it stays in there. And then we will put the screw in here, get everything lined up. Come on. There we go. Come on. There. And screw it in just till it touches. We're going to repeat that process on the second side. Um, since we just put something, two pieces together that uh, move, let's go ahead and make sure that there is no binding going on. Now we're going to move to the second side and do that. Now again, remember that you need to find your line and look on the other side and make sure that they both go in the right direction, in the same direction. In this instance, they're both going that way. The reason for this is that when you're going to adjust your turnbuckles, that you know that if you're going up with them, they're going to go in one direction and down in the other direction, and that will, will happen on all four corners of the car or on anywhere that you put a turnbuckle. You always want to make sure the lines on the turnbuckles all go in the same direction. So we're going to go ahead and mount this one off camera, and we'll be right back. Okay, so when you're done with step number 16, this is what it should look like. Everything should operate smoothly and not bind up. Your dog bone should be in place. Everything in your drivetrain should also be running smoothly. Okay, that's the end of step number 16.